Hi, I'm Lori Beckman with Production Machining. I'm here in Little Rock, Arkansas, home of BB Infinite, a startup company that makes this bottom bracket for high-end bicycles. Let's go talk to them about what makes this part special and how they became an international company. Hi, I'm Wes Wolfenberger. I'm the co-owner and CEO of BB Infinite. I'm Gary Myatt. I'm the product manager for BB Infinite, and we're here at our production facility in North Little Rock, Arkansas. BB Infinite started out as a solution to a common problem with bicycle bottom brackets. And a bottom bracket is the bearing housing that goes into your bicycle that the crank set then journals to. Whenever the crank is turning, the bottom bracket is in play, the bottom bracket uh, bearings are turning. But he was really disappointed because the interface where you put that crank, it was just two really cheap disposable plastic cups. And he was like, let's see if we can just make something that's just nicer. So what we did is we figured out what those dimensions should be. We had a working prototype and we put it in the bicycle frame and then we put the crank into the bottom bracket, just rolled right into it. That was the genesis, the, the birth of BB Infinite. And of course, at that time, we were using contract machine shops uh, to do our work for us. We had very few product offerings at the time, so it made it easy. The biggest challenges that prompted us to start manufacturing were really two things, quality control and lead time. We have to be able to pivot very quickly. That's the biggest thing. And then that was the, the, what really made us, prompted us to do it. And then we realized afterward, and we're producing it ourselves, we could make it much better quality. We can use the diamond tools. You can sit out there and fine tune the same program, you know, run after run after run after run because you're doing all the, re you're repeatedly doing them. You're not making a thousand and then you're done. With my background as a mechanical engineer and just working in a few machine shops in my career, I felt very comfortable at that time, basically taking on that risk of going and buying a machine and figuring it out. The way our process is today is grown and is so much different than what it was when we started. The bottom bracket design in itself isn't really complicated. It's really, I always tell people I'm an integrator. I'm kind of a middleman between a bicycle frame and then there's people who make the cranks. So I just need to understand how those different stances are arranged in the frame relative to one another. I do all of this in SolidWorks. And inside of that, I have another tool called Camworks. Generates three byproducts. One, I create my inspection for my CMM on my Renishaw. I can create that tool program. So now I have an inspection. I also make a 2D print. And then the final thing is I actually have the tool paths, the G code, the hard X and Z coordinates. Once that's done, I go out to the CNC machine and run off a few prototypes. We might make some tweaks, but at the end of the day, most of the coding is done. We then put it in a protective box, and we mail it to an anodizer, and they do an anodic process on that metal. They dye that, we get a black or a red, they seal it, and it comes back to us. Any blemish products that didn't meet the QC spec, and we take those and we use those and we set up our laser artwork. So what we do is we hold the part on a circular chuck, a rotary, it can spin it around 360, and we have all of our logos and everything uh, on artboard, and we basically lay out all of our artwork and a QR code on that bottom bracket. And if things are going really good, that'll be on the shelf in a fulfillment room. When an order comes in for that, we grab that package off the shelf and it gets put into a simple box and it makes it to you, the, the customer, at the end of the day. And it really could be done if the anodizing process was like just overnight. I mean, it could literally be done in like four hours or less if we know the dimensions. We concentrated very heavily on marketing because we understood the importance of it. We were really just going after the road, the road bike people because that's the products we were offering and it was really only Cervelo and Specialized. So it simplified it. We just had to market, just push, 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 push to those people. And that was really, really important for us is to be able to be on a very narrow focus with our marketing because we had a very narrow focus with our product. Uh, our videos uh, especially cover a, a lot of our technical questions because the bottom bracket issue is extraordinarily esoteric. Very, 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 very difficult to you know find specific information. So by being that, and then we share it with people doing our videos, and our videos that are educating people are also have a marketing aspect. We bring them in, educate them, 
Because a lot of our sales is like a very educational process. Because we're direct consumer, we want to provide all of these resources so that people have this huge body of knowledge so they can go in to do something that can be very scary, you know? But to see me on the video doing it, it's like pop, pop, eh, it's the way it is, don't worry about it. Click, click, click. Specific marketing, know where your people are. Uh, do, you know, do your own videos, get on camera, do what you have to do. This is your life and you gotta fight for it. <laughs> and that's just how it is. Or the most valuable advice, it's probably cliche at this point, but it's always fail fast. Don't waste unnecessary dollars. Don't waste any unnecessary time. Learning that it's maybe not a product somebody wants. The reason that our company was able to start, we had a failed business. Like we realized it was not gonna work. And we had invested a lot of, of our time and energy and money into that already. But if I was just hanging on to it, then when this new opportunity came up, instead of just being able to pivot and take those lessons learned and just apply it to maybe a better idea, you're gonna get told no a lot and you only get that feedback by getting out in front of potential clients. You gotta get out in front of people. Just don't get caught in a rut like, this is my thing, and I'm never gonna let it go. The real, the thing on the horizon for BB Infinite is we have new products that we need to launch because the, as the industry changes, we have to change with the industry. So we're always rolling out new products and, and we really aren't thinking about branching out into anything different uh, because um, you know this is our core competence. We're gonna be the best we can at this rather than uh, diversifying our product line. We make bottom brackets in the United States, in Arkansas specifically, we make them here and uh, that's what we're gonna be the best at.